After two successful appearances on the PlayStation 3 and PS Vita, Hatsune Miku and the rest of her Vocaloid crew are making their debut on the Nintendo 3DS in Hatsune Miku Project Mirai Deluxe. I previously reviewed Project Diva F Second and loved it, so I was all too happy to review Project Mirai Deluxe and see what's different, what's the same, and how it compares to the Diva games. For starters, it's impossible not to notice just how different Miku and friends look in Project Mirai compared to their previous appearances, and that's something that permeates through the entire game. The Vocaloids sport a super deformed chibi look in Project Mirai that is almost indescribably adorable and is sure to bring a smile to your face as you play. While the Diva game sported a more stylish, digital, futuristic vibe, Project Mirai relentlessly assaults your eyes and ears with sugary, hyperactive anime-flavored joy at all times. This is the kind of visual style and overall presentation that's obviously not going to be for everyone, but it fits perfectly here, and with so many games being such serious business these days, audaciously happy titles like this are refreshing. Of course, the cornerstone of any rhythm game is its soundtrack, and Project Mirai does not disappoint in this regard. If you've ever listened to Vocaloid music, you know exactly what to expect here. Miku, Rin, Lin, Luka, Mako, and Kaito all lend their unique digital voices to over 45 songs, the vast majority of which are deviously infectious, with musical hooks that'll leave you humming long after you've turned the game off. As usual for this series, the soundtrack trends heavily toward high-energy electronic pop and happy hardcore with some slower, dramatic ballads thrown in for good measure. It's impossible to objectively judge the soundtrack because musical taste is entirely subjective, but in the context of other Miku games, I generally find the song list in Project Mirai to be more consistent than both Project Diva F's and F Seconds. I'm not sure if it quite reaches the lofty heights of the first game's best songs, but at the same time, there are very few of any tunes in Project Mirai that I dislike or find boring. Each song features its own unique music video that appears in the background while you play. These generally look great and make excellent use of stereoscopic 3D should you choose to have it on, and of course, pretty much every music video is adorable thanks to Chibi Miku and friends. Long story short, Project Mirai is definitely one of the best looking 3DS games out there. Project Mirai's approach to the core rhythm game is where it really stands apart from Project Diva F and F Second. You're still pressing buttons to the rhythm of your chosen song according to on-screen icons, but whereas the icons fly in from all sides of the screen in Project Diva, here they steadily appear on a linear path that you follow throughout the song. The icons in Project Mirai are also bigger and easier to see than those in Project Diva. Personally, I prefer Mirai's style, as I sometimes found that Project Diva's tiny icons would get lost amid the video playing in the background, and the icons flying in from all sides meant that just looking for them was sometimes more challenging than staying on beat. Mirai never makes you look frantically for the next button cues, allowing you to focus on the music and your own timing. Of course, as always, miss too many button cues in a song and it's game over. Project Mirai also supports two overall playstyles in a welcome effort to appeal to a wider variety of players. In the more traditional button mode, you press the face buttons in their corresponding directions on the D-pad in time with the music, while tap mode lets you play by using your stylus to tap a variety of icons and swipe in different directions on the touchscreen. Both modes feel great, though I did note that the game is occasionally unreliable about registering swipes in tap mode. Every song in the game comes with a full range of easy, normal, and hard difficulties for both modes, so neither mode gets shortchanged and both feel equally viable and legitimate. For hardcore Miku fans, the gameplay and note charts are different enough between both modes that playing the button and tap varieties of every song is fun and adds a lot of longevity to the game. Unfortunately, those same hardcore fans are the ones who are most likely to be disappointed by Project Mirai's surprisingly low difficulty. Each song only has three difficulty levels as opposed to Project Diva's four, and only the hardest one ever presents any real danger of actually failing a song. Suffice to say, rhythm game veterans probably won't ever see the game over screen. On normal difficulty, most songs will hardly ever ask you to even alternate between two different buttons in succession, instead grouping the same button cues together before having you switch. Normal difficulty rarely even challenges you to press a button and the D-pad at the same time. It really is jarring how easy this game can be, especially if you're coming from Project Diva. Experts can't skip the easy stuff either. Because you have to beat a song on normal before its hard version will unlock, Miku and Rhythm Game veterans are going to be flying through the easy stuff whether they like it or not. It goes without saying that nothing in Project Mirai even approaches the most difficult songs in the Project Diva games. That said, Project Mirai's timing feels only a little less strict than Project Diva's, so while passing songs is easy, getting a 100% perfect score on each one still presents a steep challenge that will keep veterans busy for a long time. I do wish there was a wider difficulty spread in general, though. It's worth mentioning that the rhythm game is hugely customizable to your liking. You can purchase power-ups with play coins to make any song slightly easier or harder, adjust the size of the triggers and the speed at which they scroll by, change the sound each trigger makes, and more. Having a variety of ways to tailor your specific experience is usually a good thing, and that's certainly the case here. Like the Project Diva games, Project Mirai also moonlights as something of a very light dating sim when you're not playing the core rhythm game. When you first start Project Mirai, you're asked to choose a Vocaloid partner who you can then feed, dress up, give presents to, and play minigames with, which slowly raises their affection for you. 
Personally, I find content like this to be thoroughly uninteresting and dull, and Project Mirai is no exception here. For those who like this stuff though, there is a veritable ton of it. As you might expect, each Vocaloid has a huge variety of outfits available for purchase. You can also buy and decorate apartments for the Vocaloids to live in. All of this stuff and more is bought with Mirai points, which you earn by playing the rhythm game, so there's a constant reward cycle at play. Or at least there is if you enjoy this side of the game. Even though I don't, well-executed content that isn't for me is still well-executed content, so I'm not complaining. There's also a seemingly endless amount of miscellaneous content to mess around with in Project Mirai. You can take pictures in various modes and save them to your SD card, create custom dance routines for any song in a surprisingly detailed editor, share those custom dance routines and music video comments via Street Pass, interact with the Vocaloids via AR cards that come with the physical version of the game, freely watch the music videos of songs you've unlocked, and more. You can even use the 3DS's microphone to select songs by name if you want to. It's almost silly how much content there is in Project Mirai, and there's a lot of fun to be had no matter what kind of Miku player you are. Overall, Miku's Western debut on the 3DS is a strong one that falls just short of greatness thanks to a difficulty ceiling that's far too low, with note charts that are fairly basic in structure on all but the highest difficulty level, and sometimes even then. Still, I like it a lot, and of the three Hatsune Miku games now available in the West, Project Mirai's music might just be the best overall. It's also the only one that includes Sega's classic puzzler Puyo Puyo as a minigame, and that has to count for something. Those who are intrinsically opposed to absurdly cute, thoroughly Japanese games like this may as well move right along, but Hatsune Miku Project Mirai Deluxe is a quality offering for its intended audience. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned to Game Explained for more on Hatsune Miku and all things gaming.